the first play we're going to look at is a one-handed field the ball on the ro on a slow roller. Uh, here we have Austin Wasserman, uh, co-founder of AB Athletic Development. He's approaching the ball, and what we're looking for here really um, is to field this ball out in front with the last two steps being right-left uh, as you catch this ball. We're looking to break down a little bit with these little uh, choppy steps breaking down to get the, the timing correct. Um, as we field this ball, the left foot is actually going to be off the ground. Again, he's got this glove extended out in front. It's kind of like our pick drill that we do. Um, but this left foot is really going to be moving through this ball and off the ground. If you have the left foot in front, down on the ground, you're not going to have enough time to make a transfer and get the ball out. So here as we move this forward, you can see how this ball gets in the glove. His left foot is in the air. On a one-handed play, you could even get the hand, this left foot, this glove side foot, even further back. Um, give yourself give yourself more time to make this transfer. So the left foot's in the air. Next we're going to get into the rocker step with this left foot as he's getting the ball up and into his hand to make this throw off his right foot. Something to think about with this with this throw. It's often called an off-balance throw, but you actually need to be balanced to make this throw. If you don't have balance, you don't have power in throwing the ball off of your throwing side foot. You need your hips involved to be able to make this strong throw. So it's often called off balance, but as Austin's going through here, you can see that he is, in fact, fairly balanced when he makes this throw. Next, we're looking at Omar Pena. He's a shortstop for the Worcester Tornadoes during a pregame infield outfield. Uh, he's already done a backhand deep in the hole at short, so he's approaching this ball for the, the long one, short one. Um, really looking for the, the two handed slow roller here. With the left foot, he does not need as much time to transfer this ball, so the left foot can be a little bit further out in front, closer to the ground when he's receiving this ball. The right hand is going to be gently covering the ball. Obviously, with two hands, you got to get that top hand on top of the ball, ready for the exchange. Again, this left foot is off the ground, moving through as he's fielding the ball. And with two hands, he's got that hand on the ball, so he's already got it up, transferred. He's got the ball in his hand right here, ready to make a throw. Next play we're looking at is a bare hand on the slow roller. Uh, as I'm approaching this ball, you're going to notice how much lower I have to get because I don't have this glove reaching out, giving me a couple extra inches. So you really got to get your body down. With the last two steps being right left, really got to get that hand out in front, head down again, fielding that ball out in front. The amount of time required to make a transfer to the throwing hand is obviously zero, so this left foot can be even closer to the ground on this play. Again, looking for this rocker step. So very low approach. Left foot can be further out in front to make this play a lot smoother with less transfer time. Getting this ball up and ready to throw again. This might look like an off-balance throw, but got the throwing hand and the foot balancing each other out. Get my hips involved in this throw and actually pretty balanced so I can have some strength and arm strength behind this ball. Something that's very important to consider on these slow rollers is the speed of the ball, which will help you choose whether or not you're going to use one hand, two hands, or the bare hand. Typically, one hand or two hand slow rollers is more of a comfort thing, whatever you practice more, whatever you're used to doing, and what you feel most comfortable with. When it comes to a bare handed ball, you want to make sure that the ball is almost stopped and something that you can easily control. The glove offers a much bigger surface to catch the ball with and help you control the spin of the ball with the leather. So it's easier to catch a faster moving ball with a glove. A ball that's almost stopped, you want to go with the bare hand. In this case, the ball is all the way out to the dirt. I'm going to try to catch the ball with the bare hand and it's very difficult. There's too much going on, too much speed on the ball, and just my hand's not big enough to control it and get the ball out of there. Just as with a ball that's moving too fast, that is hard to control with your bare hand, if a ball is moving too slow, it's very hard to control the ball with your glove. So you want to probably go with the bare hand on a ball that's moving very, very slowly or even stopped. In this play, I'm approaching the ball, again with the same low approach. Left foot is moving through the ball, but as you can see, this ball is almost stopped. It's in the grass, and my glove just cannot get under the baseball. With a, with a moving ball that's going fast, the ball will roll up into your glove and give you a lot of control. But here the ball stopped, and it's you can see it a little bit. It's in the very end of my glove, very hard to control, and obviously I don't make this play.